Hi, good morning. I'm Coach Todd, head coach No Limits Triathlon.com. In this video, I'm going to review the rim to rim run that we just did four days ago. And it was uh, really quite something. I need to put my coffee down. It's, uh, I'm going to try and do this little uh, pre video very quick so that you can watch the second video. I found that when I was doing the Grand Canyon that uh, leading up to it, I got really, really nervous. And I've done over 100 triathlons, 14 Ironmans, and for whatever reason, this 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 event really uh, caused a lot of stress for me. I had two nights where I had trouble sleeping. I woke up, heart rate was just, just going. And I had to ask myself, why was I so worried? Why was I so nervous about this Grand Canyon run? I think it came down to a couple of things. One thing was that it was really not supported. So when I typically I train for triathlons or Ironmans, you have eight stations out there and they're helping you, they're supporting you, cheering you on the whole way. When you're doing the Grand Canyon rim to rim, uh, you're, you're doing it fully supported by yourself. And you may be doing it with a few other people, but really you're on your own. I think that caused me worry. The second one was starting off at, at night. We chose to start at two in the morning and I didn't know how safe that was going to be. So those are my main uh, worry issues. And the other issue was carrying all that stuff, right? So that kind of goes back to the first worry. Like how do I carry all the stuff required to do this ginormous task? And so then for me to get rid of the worry, I had to try to figure out, okay, how can I do this? And then uh, do it effectively so that I can get rid of all this worry. And the first thing I did was, figure out how to carry all my stuff. Now, I'm gonna walk you through what I used on the day and it worked well for me. We chose to do it in the third week in August, which could be the hottest hottest day out there. You, you know, most people choose not to run the Grand Canyon in the dead of August, because it's, it's gonna be really, really warm. We were fortunate that we had quite a bit of overcast and it almost, we almost got caught in the rain. Because we left early, that we, we did not get the rain. People that left later, they got caught in the rain. So that can be worrisome too, is when you're in a Grand Canyon, thunder and lightning can be a major problem. I mean, they, it's monsoon season, and so that's a lot of rain that can come down. So that was a big worry for me too. But this is what I chose to wear. I'm gonna go from head to toe. Starting off is we, I had a headlamp. Okay, this is really just it was uh, not a very expensive headlamp. It was funny, my mother-in-law gave me a set of running lights to use for training wintertime. And I used this for the Grand Canyon. This worked really well. It takes three AAA batteries. One of my other worries that I had was going down was, what if these batteries die? I didn't carry spare. I had them, but I, was, I chose not to. I didn't want the extra weight. And this light with three batteries we started at two, the sun came up around five, or it got light around 5.20, this was sufficient, it worked, okay? On the top of my head, I wore a hat, like this big floppy hat. The reason why I chose a big floppy hat is uh, if it got really, really warm down there, I wanted to protect my, my face and my ears. With these flaps, you can fold them up so that they're not in your way as you're running, and as it gets hotter, you can open up the flaps. So I like this, this worked really well. And actually in the beginning, I didn't wear it, I had it shoved in my backpack. Now, as the day got hotter, I put it on, but I found with the last an hour to go, it became heavy. So I took it off and I think I was even just running with it in my hand just because it was getting heavy, you're getting tired. But would I use this again? Yes, I would use <coughs> this hat again for sure. What I chose to wear for a shirt was an actual bike jersey. No Limits is my, my team. And basically what it is, it's a very lightweight jersey. The nice thing about this is you can fully unzip it. And I chose to fully unzip it when I was running because I was getting quite hot. So it allows some uh, aeration to happen there. On the back, the thing I liked about the back is I got three pockets. One two, three, so that when I have trash from my garbage, from the food that I'm eating, I can put it in the back pocket, or if I have something I need to carry, you just shove it in the back. Instead of going taking off your backpack, you have access to pockets in your back. So that was really quite, I like this a lot. I would use this again. 
shorts. This was my idea for this was we're running. So I wore running shorts. So very thin, lightweight running shorts. For socks, I usually wear socks um, that are low cut on the ankle. But for the Grand Canyon, I went out and bought new socks and these are higher ankle socks. For me, I didn't want to get a lot of uh, dirt and debris inside the sock. You can see how dirty these socks are. That's because I haven't washed my clothes yet. Yes, they still stink. And so they're still dirty. I still have the Grand Canyon red, red rock dirt on these socks. These socks work well for me. And again, they're, they're lightweight sock with a higher ankle on it. So that worked well. Because there's a pot potential for rain and potential for cold, although we were, we were never cold, I chose to bring a lightweight rain jacket. Will this thing breathe? No, it will not breathe. So it's designed to keep me dry. It's my cycling rain jacket. The reason why I chose this one is it's a very good water repellent and it is very lightweight and easy to fold up and see how small I can get it and then I can take that and put it in the back pocket or my the back pocket of my running vest. So this was a good choice. I wore it afterwards on the north rim when it was starting to get a little bit cool and that keep me warm but throughout the run even at the start of the morning, I did not have to wear this. At the start of the run in the morning, I just had my hat, uh, lamp, jersey, vest, shorts, socks, and shoes. So this brings us to the shoes. Now look, I am, I am no means an expert in trail running or hiking or anything like that at all. But I do do a lot of running and we run here, I'm based in Calgary, in the winter time. The shoes I use in the winter time, these are the Newton Bocas, B-O-C-O-A-T's. Why I like these is they have good grip on the bottom for running on the snow and ice. So I, instead of buying new running shoes, I chose to wear these for the Grand Canyon. And really I don't wear them in the summertime. I took them out the week before to start training for the Grand Canyon. And they're heavier shoes. Then the shoes I'm used to, they're heavier, but they worked really well for me in the Grand Canyon. The toe box is wide, which I found by being on my feet for so long, it took me 8 hours and 43 minutes. My toes are moving around a lot in the front, and I was getting a little bit of blisters on the toes. But nothing, like I'm looking at my toes now, and they're, and they're fine. But I also put on some band-aids on the top part of my, my foot, where the, where the tongue comes into play with the top part of my foot so that I wouldn't have any blisters. So that just prevents it of putting on two big band-aids. So the shoes work well. This vest here, this was uh, loaned to me by my athlete, Mike. And uh, thank you very much, Mike. This is a Solomon Lab 3 running vest. And it works. It worked out really well. I remember when I first put it on, I'm like, what the hell? How does this thing work? So it goes on top like this. And I had... These are the water bottles I use. So these are soft water bottles, which are, I like these things a lot because once they get soft, I mean, once they get empty, they get soft and you can take them and you shove them in your back pocket and you keep running. So that's really fantastic. But you have to realize though, when, you, when you're carrying these, exactly how much water you have with you. So it's not a lot. This is 500 mils and this is 500 mils together is a liter. So they go in here when they're full, you just shove them in here and when you're gonna drink, you just reach down, you bite and the water comes up and you, and you drink. It's really quite a cool little system. I liked it. And so for me, this was brand new. I, I never used this system at all. Usually I run with a water bottle or nothing at all. So it was quite new to me. But I knew that this wasn't enough water and that was one of my worries. So then I got two more, two more of these soft water bottles. And what I did with these guys is I put them in my back Remember in the back pocket here, I also have my running or the rain jacket. And so that's in the back and on side of those, on the side of the rain jacket, I had two of these guys filled up. Now these ones are smaller than the ones in the front. And these ones are, hang on a sec, because it says this is 500. I'm sure they were smaller. Yeah, they're 250. So 250 and 250, that's 500. So if I got 1,000 in the front, then I got 500 in the back, which means I'm carrying 1.5 liters. And so it's a lot of water to carry when you're not used to it. So this thing gets pretty heavy, right? 
So also I'm carrying other things too. I'm carrying fuel and it's all going on in this vest. To keep myself uh, protected from the sun, I was going to wear these. These are, uh, what are these called? They're arm coolers, right? So you put them on to keep your arm cool. You squirt water with them and it actually cool off your skin. We use these when we're racing in hot temperatures like Hawaii or, or Puerto Rico or a place like that. These work really well. But you know what? For the Grand Canyon, I, I didn't have to use them because it wasn't that hot for me to, for me to put them on. So even uh, running up the north end or north, north rim, I didn't have to wear those. But I had them just in case. Now let's move on to nutrition. I'm going to show you how I carried my fuel and what I chose to eat. This year for my Ironmans, I've been using these things called Cliff Shop Blocks. And you get six little chewy blocks in one, one package. And if, if you take one every 10 minutes, that will last you 60 minutes, which is an hour, right? So that, this was my fuel for an hour. So every 10 minutes, I would take one block. And I started that right when I started my run, when 10 minutes start nibbling. And how I would do it, right? So I would have one, two, four packages up here. And then when I'm running, I have a package, I have it open. And what I do is I shove it into my pants like that. And so it's sticking out. And so that when I need to eat, I, I reach down and grab it, squeeze it out and chew it. And then I just put it back in. And, and then it just usually stays there. This is practice from, you know, training in the summertime. This, this works well for me. It's easier for me to do that and I keep going up top here. So that's how I, I chose to do that. And I think I ran with, when I first started thinking about how long this is going to take me, I, I, I looked at some previous videos like this or previous notes and it said like if you were you know a middle of the pack runner you can expect to finish within seven to nine hours i think it was seven to nine or six to eight somewhere in there so i in my head i thought you know what i'm gonna I, you know i'm a little quicker than the middle of the pack i'm gonna be finishing in, in seven hours that's kind of what i thought to myself so i figure if i have enough fuel for seven or eight hours i'm going to be good so i believe i had i had six of these guys and then I took two gels, just in case. So a gel, 30 minutes, another gel, 30 minutes. I also took in salt. The salt that I've been using and training with this year is called base salt. And the way base salt works is what I did with this, guys. I had it here and I put it in the bottom. And every, I don't know, maybe every 15 minutes, what you do is you flip the top. You lick your, your your thumb and like that, then you get your salt in. And then you can control how much salt you want. It's a very, very salty taste, right? So if you like salt, it's a good thing. I love salt, so it works well. If you don't like salt, it may be too strong for you. Um, I took four containers of this stuff. I only, I only need to use one. Uh, and I used it, I like using it probably every 30 minutes. And I would take maybe two or three licks of that. And again, I, I, I choose to use this once I feel like my body doesn't feel quite right. I take salt. I take salt and I take calories and take fluid. Try to get myself feeling normal. So those are my, that's an indicator for me that something's not quite right. And you'll know that you go, you know what, I don't feel as good as I used to. So it's a sign to drink calories, salt. So take those things in. I was also carrying, uh, band-aids and I put everything in like little uh, Ziploc bags to keep out the dirt and then you can travel with small packages. Uh, these were just in case that I had blisters along the way you can just uh, do some self first aid and you're on your way. I didn't have to use these. In my uh, search of the videos for the rim to rim I've, I, I learned that along the way there could be a lot of bugs and they could be eating you alive. And so I, I, did, I don't like bugs. So what I did is, you can't tell, but inside this baggie is bug spray. So I, I didn't want to carry a bug spray with me, so I just squirted a, quite a few squirts or sprays inside the bag. I mean, you can still smell it. I didn't have to use it. The bugs were not an issue for me, okay? I also have in this bag, I have um, some Advil. The reason why I take Advil is not to get rid of muscle soreness.
for me, I sometimes suffer from migraines. And if I have a migraine down the Grand Canyon, I need to take Advil to try to stop it before it becomes bad. So that's why I have, I have Advil, not to take away uh, muscle soreness, but to help me with my head or migraine. In this container here was sunscreen. So I started off the day by lubing up with sunscreen. And then if I needed to reapply, I would have this container here. And as it turned out, I never needed to reapply. The other thing that I had was two bags of beef jerky. So I went to the store, bought a, a big thing of beef jerky, and I separated it into two. And that was a really nice treat for me halfway through the run. And it just, I sat down. You'll see if you watch this video, see where I sat down, had the beef jerky, and it was really quite enjoyable. Now, my training for this rim to rim was really training for an Ironman. I, I would do some hills, but the hills were really for uh, the, the Ironman course that I was doing. It wasn't really specific for the Grand Canyon. I thought in my head, look, if I can get myself fit enough to do an Ironman, I'm gonna be able to do the rim to rim, you know, okay. The nice thing about the rim to rim is it's not a race. We weren't racing, we we're just trying to get from one side to the other side. And then I needed to get there by two o'clock. I had a pre-range shuttle from Trans Canyon Shuttle. And what they do is they pick you up at two o'clock and they shuttle you back to, this, to the South Rim, which is fantastic. You can even uh, drop off a bag early. So when I got there, they had a bag from me, put on some fresh clothes and you have a nice four and a half hour. It's a long way to get back. Four and a half hour uh, van ride back to um, the start. And that's a super scenic uh, ride. I loved it. Now, when you're actually doing this, uh, rem to rem, it's it's really physically challenging. So make sure that you are in good shape. For me, when I went into this, I thought there'd be a lot more running involved, and it turned out there wasn't that much. I mean, there's still some running, but I just thought there'd be more. I thought we'd be running the whole way through, and we didn't. So going down the south rim, I think it takes you about maybe 10, uh, 12, 13 kilometers to get down to the bottom. The slope is like this, and you're kind of you're kind of shuffling along, but you really can't run. It's pitch black. You got this light on, and you've got the, there's rocks in the way. There's they got little steps, and the pathway is not smooth. For me, I did I rolled my left ankle. I would bet maybe six or eight times, and what I would do is every time I rolled it, I'd come back and I just try to work my way through it. The pain, but I knew that it was never that bad. So you roll it. Feel the pain and then you come back and you just kind of work your way through it. Although what's funny or not funny but uh, curious is that at the end of our ride or our run, we saw a guy coming back and he looked like a zombie. And that's kind of how we felt to go, look, I bet you he did the same thing because he looks exactly like we did. And I asked him, hey, how was your run? He goes, you know what? I don't know. I said, what hike did you do? He said, I ran from the south side. I said, hey, good job, man. We did it too. Yeah, but did you did you roll your ankle at the first mile? I'm like, oh, no. So he rolled his ankle at the first mile, and he had a lot of swelling happening. So for him to finish that 40-something uh, kilometer hike with a, with a sore ankle, oh, my gosh, that's crazy. Once you get down to the bottom, there's probably about a four kilometer stretch that's relatively flat. And that's where I took off from uh, my two partners, Johan and Kevin. And I thought, this is it. I'm going to have like a 14 you know, kilometer stretch where I can just start running. And so I ran, I ran in there, tried to keep the effort low. You know, I got the headlamp on. The sun is slowly coming up, so it's slowly getting brighter, but not quite there. And then all of a sudden I realized this is a lot of work. Like, why is this so hard? And I look at my heart rate, my heart rate's quite high and I, it's it's a false flat. And then if you, if I'm gonna pull up here and pull up the profile of the run, if you look from the south end coming down, you can see, you know, the elevation or the angle. And at the bottom there, that's where it's relatively flat. And it's really not that much, right? And then you can see it's a <clears throat> gradual slow incline all the way to the north rim so that's you can see that it's always going up 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 right once you get over there and that's not something that i had in my mind so if you're going to be doing this kind of know the profile of what you're going to be doing and it it takes this toll on you and it's hard to keep going fast so what i learned from this and like remember i am not a hiker i'm not an ultra runner you know i'm an iron man so what i learned from uh, kevin actually is that 
he when he finds elevation going up he just goes to a walk and he just does like a power walk he has a bit of a military experience so he i can tell that once he gets in the zone boom he's in the zone and he's on a mission right so for me i'm um, my mission is just to enjoy it i have the camera out taking pictures taking video if you are brave enough to watch the video um, watch it it's a long one but it's uh it's, i think it's well worth it i might stop the video of me rambling on about what i did here no not yet not yet not yet because i want to talk about the water because the water was a bit of an issue too oh and getting lost to me i didn't know where i was going i kind of looked at the, the map it seemed like oh you just start at the top you just keep following you get to the other end and that's sort of true but not quite true there are a couple of places you can get lost and when you're out there in the middle of the dark and you got this light on you go which way do i go it, it can be a little scary so johan had a fancy watch that had the map already on it so he could tell if we were on or off the course which helped us a ton right so know where you're going bring a map if you have a watch it shows you where you're going preload it with a map so you know if you are if you are on or off the track although his watch with the gps was bouncing around the canyon sometime so it was, it was can be a bit tricky to see if you're exactly on on the map um the water stops so like i said i'm running with these guys at the beginning i got all these preloaded and i have inside i'm using this it's called isogenics amped hydrate i like i like this a lot i train for ironmans with it and so I also had a little baggie of powder. And so as I was running, once I got to a point where I wanted to fill up all my stuff, I would just add the powder to it and just shake it up. So I'd have some electrolyte into my, my, wa my water as well. There are quite a few, when we were doing it, all the water stations were open. So there's quite a few water spots. I think the longest stretch were on the map, it said it was from Phantom Ranch to now, forgive me if this is a wrong cottonwood campground. That seemed like it'd be 14 kilometer stretch with no water. So at Phantom Ranch, we made sure that we had all our bottles full up so that we can make this long stretch. And I found that because we were doing it so early, that stretch was not that bad. And it's, it's relatively flat, so it's, it's, it's not too bad. But it seemed like it took forever to get to the next water station. But the, the, the water station, and I forgive me because I, I don't remember the names, but as we're going up the north rim, I, I thought it, just in my mind there'd be more water stops along the way than there actually were. And the longest one that seemed like it took forever and I actually ran out of water was from, was leading up to the Supai Tunnel. So whatever the last or the previous water station from, from there to the Supai, I would recommend you to fill up with water so that you do have enough water to get to the tunnel. And once you get to the tunnel, then load up again with water. From the tunnel, you're getting closer to the top, but that that stretch from the tunnel to the top is really quite difficult. You know, even if it's a mile or, or two miles, it sounds like in your head, oh, you could do that, no problem, but it takes a long, long time. Your, your energy level is very low and you're just trying to keep moving. I didn't bring the ski poles with me, but if I did it again, I would, I would bring the ski poles. I think it would really help you just get up that hill, you know, provide you some extra motivation or extra rhythm. So I would use, I would use the, the ski poles and figure out a way to strap them on my pack. That's the reason why I chose not to bring them because I'm like, I don't know where to strap them on. So I would, I would figure out a way to put those poles on. Kevin and Johan had a pack that they just strapped on. So I would probably do the same thing next time. Now, I think that's it. I think that's it we got to the top and it was it was good when you get to the top there's nothing there there's no um there's no store you know that you can buy a coke or get a beer or anything there or some food you have to go from there 0.6 miles to the campground and there's a campground store which is very nice they have lots of amenities that you will need but you do need to get from the north rim and you got to keep going so we stopped there kevin was there first I was there second, and then Johan, and so you stopped, and then you gotta get moving again, and then hike your way to the store. And that store, that's where you pick up the, the Canyon Canyon Shuttle. Shuttle Canyon, what did it call? Anyway, you get the shuttle from 
from uh, the north rim to the south rim. Okay, that's it. I'm hoping that covered some questions. If you are planning on doing the rim to rim, it's a fantastic, uh, fantastic run. I think it took me eight hours and 43 minutes to do it. Could I have done it faster? For sure, I've, I could have done it faster. There's two things, though, that slowed me down. One is that th two and a half weeks ago, I just did an Ironman, so I'm a little fatigued. And the other thing, too, is two weeks from the, from the Grim and the Grim, I'm racing uh, another half Ironman. So I'm like trying to conserve energy and not burn up energy that, that I don't have. So I was happy just to kind of cruise through it. Uh, but, you know, still, you're still pushing yourself. So give yourself a plan to do this. Give yourself a lot of time to do it. If you're going to do the rim to rim to rim, uh, rim, to, rim to rim to rim, watch a different video. Not this one, uh, this because this guy does not want to do that. It's a lot of effort. Um, you would have to train really well for that and train in the mountains. Uh, it's an ordeal. Could you do it? For sure you could do it. You need lights that are going to work well because when you go back, because when I was back on the south rim there, I was, my legs were sore, but I think it was at eight o'clock at night. I'm out there stretching and it's pitch black. By eight o'clock, it's pitch black at that time that we were there. And I could see some lights in the distance. I'm like, there's some hikers way down there. They still got to come back up. And I just thought you need lights to be able to see where you're going because there's no lights down there and it's pitch black. So rim to rim to rim, that's, that's for, uh, watch a different video, rim to rim. I'm hoping uh, this video helped you. And the footage to follow this, it's long, but it will give you a very good idea of what you're going to see um, on the pathway. And it really is a fantastic pathway. And I wish you the best of luck. If you have any questions about it, just leave a comment below the video. Hey, if you like this video, give me a thumbs up. If you didn't, give me a thumbs down. Although I don't like thumbs down, mostly thumbs up. All right, thank you very much for watching this and enjoy the rest of the video. This is Quick Todd saying thank you very much and happy trading. Today is August, today is Thursday, August 24th. 2 a.m. 2 a.m. in the morning. It's like early. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Who decided on this time? I think it was this guy. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Perfect time. Great day. To, great way to start the day. Yeah. Breakfast for champions. <laughs> you know, are you ready for this? No turning back. Mm. I'll ever be, I suppose. Let's do this. Today, what are we doing today? We're doing... Grand Canyon, rim to rim to rim. Rim to rim. 48 rim. beautiful miles, 10,000 feet of climbing. No big deal. Gorgeous views all the way. NBD. Slow and steady, safety first. Are you ready to do this? We're ready. Oh.
So 2 a.m. Hopefully this will work. You can't really see me. Maybe I'll go get get the lights here. There you go. There. Where's Todd? Where's Todd right there? Ready to go. Let's How are you feeling, it. Todd? I feel pretty good. Yeah? Yeah. I see a little lightning out there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Check this out. I don't know if you can see. Well, you can see just darkness, I guess. But, uh, yeah, anyways. It is damn windy out there. Um, but, yeah, some lightning. Uh, but, uh, ready to do this. Kevin's in uh Kevin just taking a break. He's taking an early He's break. Taking an early break, yeah. Taking an early break. Christine says stay safe. Oh, is Christine up? Christine's up. Oh good morning. Yeah. I know my family is definitely not up. There's no, <laughs> there's no way they're up. They're up. These packs are pretty heavy. Yeah, they're not gonna lie, they're heavier than I thought it would be. Oops. Oh, here comes Kevin. Where's Kevin? Kevin! Get over here! Say hi to everybody first before we go, man. Oh, what's up, lights. everybody? Let's there do this. Go. Let's do this. How you feeling, Kevin? I'm feeling good, man. Yeah. Let's get on this trail. Let's, Let's give her. This. Let's give her, man. Let's give her. Hey okay, guys, I'll see you later. Uh, we out. Whoa, 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 whoa. He you dropped your sunscreen, dude. Yeah. Good call. Thanks, Todd. Hey, so I'm here, pulling up the rear. I'm the anchor. Hey, check out the view to your right. So say we hi. Hello there, good morning. I am in the middle of my rim to rim hike in Grand Canyon. Right now it's 541. The sun is going to be up soon. This is good, I was able to turn off my headlight, which worked really, really well. But after a while, it gets a little bit hypnotizing. There's three of us doing this myself. Johan and Kevin, I took off a little bit here to run by myself. Kevin's behind me and then Johan. We have uh, walkie-talkies to keep ourselves in, uh, in check. I think that was just a bat. There's a lot of things you don't see at night. But it's nice to have the light out so you can see. Have a look.
We started at 2 o'clock or just after 2 in the morning. It was dark and windy. But uh, I do think those are bats. Um, you know what? It turned out to be good because now uh, I'm en route to the north rim. The sun's not up yet, so it's not super hot. It's going to get warm though. But yeah, it's going good so far. I'm going to go back to your running and show you some footage. Let's go. Those are totally bats. Ah!
I gotta tell you, this place is pretty spectacular. If you ever get a chance to do this crazy thing, as of right now, I recommend it. We'll see how I feel at the end of this crazy thing. So today, I'm doing round the rim, which means I'm starting at the start at the south end, go to the north end, and then I get a shuttle back to the beginning. Kevin and Johan, they're really crazy. They're going rim to rim to rim. So they got a hell of a long day ahead of them. And it's only going to get hotter. So they're trying to conserve energy so that they're able to go back and forth in one day. That's super impressive or super crazy. Maybe a little bit of both. Been using bay salt today. For my nutrition, in case you're curious, sorry about opening up my top, but I'm hot. Okay, so I got two bottles here, two on my back. I'm using uh, shop blocks. I like them in Iron Man and the base salt. I got some beef jerky, haven't had that yet. I'm gonna wait that wait until I get desperate. For that I got a couple of gels. And that's about it. Try to eat on like every 15 minutes, taking a shop block, every 30 taking a base salt and sipping on my fluid. There's water stops along the way. Right now I'm in the middle of the longest stretch without water, so we fueled up at uh, Phantom Ranch. So I'm good to go. I have a electrolyte mix to add to the water if I need it. And uh, yeah, it's good. I'm gonna check in with the boys, see how they're doing.
body doing? Doing pretty good. Yeah. Might chuck a bunch of water to get to the next water store. Addicted to. I don't really love running, but I love the time and space of running. You know, like yeah, just going out, shutting off work, or even thinking about a work call or something, and just running for a few hours. Kept up for a good day. Yeah, it helps you solve problems too, right? Oh yeah. yeah. Check that out behind us. Oh yeah. Alpine goal, man. And there's really not that many nutballs doing uh, rim to rim. No. Apparently not. This section is steep. Oh, yeah. I don't know what the percent is, pretty steep. Hello there. I am in the middle of the Grand Canyon, making my way through the rim to rim. Start on the south side, heading towards the north. I think I have about uh, two hours left. And you know I'm tired. So I decided to just, uh, you know what, I'm taking a break. Eating some beef jerky, uh, drinking some water. And I'm like, you know what, this is not a race. 
I'm just gonna sit and enjoy. Check out this view I got. It really is quite spectacular here. I'm enjoying it a lot. Uh, this is something that I just decided to do months ago with uh, Johan because he's training for the Moab 200. And I decided, you know what, I want to come too. I didn't really train for this. Uh, I trained for Ironman, so I figured this was good, that was good enough training to get me through it. And it's probably right, but uh, it's quite different than an Ironman, uh, but it's, it's different in a good way. Uh, I'm really uh, enjoying the day, but I'm also really enjoying my break right now. And so I'm going to continue to eat and continue to drink. And in a few more minutes, I'll keep heading on up that pathway. All right, see you later. Okay, I'm gonna take a seat. Johan? Yeah! I get really tired. Super tired. Kevin's machine. Machine. And I'm like, uh, I'm gonna sit here and have a little, little, little break. That sounds like a great idea. So I got my beef jerky out. I had oh. some beef jerky. Did you see the rattlesnake? Yeah. That was kind of cool. Yeah. Almost a pinch away from shitting my pants. I, for whatever reason, they don't bug me at all. Really? No. What's the biggest thing about a rattlesnake that bugs you? It's a snake. It's the land shark for me. <laughs> it's the land shark. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? I know I got there and Kevin's... Like, he's like, let's let, let the snake pass. Yeah. I'm like, all right, I'll let it pass. Where did it pass from? He's going from rim to rim. <laughs> <laughs> he's well, making his well, way. We're kicking his ass. He's we're... making his way to the south side. <sighs> that was a good one, Todd. So we are. What's the word of the day today, Johan? Grand. Grand. Absolutely. I need to be there by 10. So that's good. Unbound. Well, here we are, Johan and I. Johan's caught up to me after my little break. We both had a break together. It was very, very nice. Now, we're making progress towards the North Rim. We're almost there. It's pretty grand here. Pretty amazing. You're on the right pathway? You must be. Canyon! Run! <laughs> Yeah, this was never on my bucket list. Was? Never. To do this. To see it, I like to see it, but not to do this. Well, this is a great way to see the Grand Canyon.
it looks like some jogging guys. Yeah. yeah. Okay, five minutes to the top. Yeah, no problem. But we, start, we started at the five south side. Five minutes? At the south side. Yeah, so we're almost done. Well, he's almost done. He's going, going back, back, too. Oh, okay. Yeah, he's crazy. Stupid. Have a great day. Have a good one, guys. I think it's great too that someone built this pathway. Trim. Yeah, yeah it was in one day. No, 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 no. This was a camping trip, but the, oh. then and then the idea was to come up because it, it was closed up top, oh, so it was I to see. come up and down in one day. But we got we got uh, turned back because of a storm, a bad storm. So oh, yeah, no. so we're getting it today. There you yeah. go. We're going rim to rim to rim today. Nice. No, we're in the piece we missed. No, so. they're doing it. Oh, you today. are. Oh, that's you're awesome. Doing both rim to rim, rim to, to rim. rim to rim. You're what time did you start? 2, 2 a.m. Oh my gosh. You guys are great. Yeah. Yeah, you don't well, look we'll like see. you've been doing we'll anything. See. We've been we'll doing nothing. You might hear us in the nothing. news. <laughs> Thank you. See you later, guys. Hey guys. Uh, oh, by the way, three weeks ago we did an Ironman. No big deal. Yeah. Shit, my GPS is going down. Yeah, that's right. We are kind of a big deal. Maybe you've heard of us, Johan and Andy, yeah. Coach Todd. Yeah. yeah. This is what we do. This is what we do. We come, we conquer. I've been talking about this thing for a long time now. I'll tell you what, it is a pretty epic thing to do. Yeah. Pretty awesome, though. Pretty awesome. And the cool thing is, is you're almost halfway done, and I'm almost done. My day is almost over. Are you sure you don't want to come back? Positive. I just walk. I don't have enough supplies. The biggest thing though, I don't have the desire. Yeah, yeah if you don't have the desire, you'd be just hating it. I'd be hating it. Sounds like it. That's a long way down. Still have a ways to go. Glad not Johan has to go do this again. He's a champ. Definitely getting higher.
It's like these were meant for us to sit on. Kevin. We are now about three miles from the top, the North Rim. It's getting quite steep. We're quite tired, but we're taking uh, one step at a time. We're slowly getting done. You know it's bad when Johan takes out the poles. I gotta take the poles out. Gotta take the poles out. Now it's all business. You know what's really funny is that I'm a skier and I didn't bring poles. Because you're a machine, Todd. I'm a machine, I have no limits. That's right. I'm about to hit my limits. No, no, no. Let's do it, man. Hop, let's go. We are creating a documentary. Johan Andy. And the meaning of his life. Biography, what did I say? Alright, scratch that. Take two. It's a biography of a man on a mission. 38 years ago he was born. 38 years ago he was born. Where were you born? Jakarta. Jakarta. Indonesia. Indonesia. Changed the world. He has changed the world. One step at a time. He's now into endurance sports. Started with no limits many years ago doing Calgary 7.3. This year is a good year. It's a good year. What do you do so far this year? First one was almost Wasa. Wasa. And then did the no limits camp in Hawaii, which was killer. This was off the hook. Off the hook, come to Hawaii. And then, uh, did, uh, Santa Rosa. Santa Rosa what? Iron Man. Iron Man. Actually, I did Hawaii first and then Wasa. And then Santa Rosa. And now, you're doing something that I've never done nor probably ever will. He's doing something called rim to rim to rim. Yeah. Which south is rim. which north is rim. Uh, going from south side to the north side, back to the north side of the Grand Canyon. In one day, that's right, one day. Maybe. <laughs> 
<laughs> you have to be determined. Yeah, you have to be determined. TBD. Yeah. Me, I'm just doing a rim to rim. After racing two weeks, so I gave myself a buy. When I get to the top of this, I got a two o'clock shuttle and a nice bag of clothing for me to change into. Kevin calls it my princess bag. I'm just happy I have a bag up there. I was telling Johan, I'm probably gonna go grab a beer up there too. Why not? Maybe have a sandwich. Maybe there's a cafe up there where I can look over the Grand Canyon. Maybe. I don't know, I've never been here before. I do know one thing is this trail is not very busy. We're recording this biography in uh, August 24th, 2017. So if you're watching this in 2020, congratulations. It's still online. Been the highlight of this trip so far for you, Johan? Seeing those sea deer, saw three deer. We saw three deer this morning? Yeah. We started at a crazy hour of 2 a.m. We had to wear headlamps and it was pitch black and windy. It was quite surreal, to be honest. And then on one of the descents, Johan sees these reflective eyes staring out at us. There's a family of deer, probably a mama deer, and a papa deer, and a baby deer. Well, it's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. For me, one of the highlights was uh, playing Echo with you in the canyon. Echo! Yeah. Johan, do your, uh, do your famous slogan. NBD! Rim to rim to rim. Woo! Maybe Kevin heard you. Yeah. I think we're gonna end this biography here. I'm getting tired. It's Peace out. Peace out, but it's hot. Do you know what? It's not crazy hot out, is it? Nope. No, it's like, I think we picked a good day to do the Grand Canyon. Yeah, we did. Yeah, really good. Keep in mind, it's only like 9 o'clock right now. 9.23. Probably get a little bit warmer. saying through this tunnel and the water is close by. NBD. Well, got about a mile left to go. I'm not going to kid you, this is really, really hard. It's a slow slog right now. It's, for me, it's taking just one step. Friend of the other watching my watch and trying to count down the kilometers. I know one thing that's good for me is once I get to the top, I'm done. I'm not doing a rim to rim to rim today, which to me I'm 
very grateful for. Not something that I'll, I want to do today for sure. I'd have to train better. But all in all, it's been a magnificent day. Really challenging myself for sure. Pushing. Right now I'm surrounded by mule poop. Smell that? It's not so good. Okay, almost done. Howdy. Morning, how are you? Good, thank you. Hi. Good morning, how are you? Good, and you? How close to the top? Oh, we've been going for, I don't know. Half an hour? Yeah, a good half an hour. Oh, no. <laughs> thank oh, you. Where did you come from? Uh, the south side. The, oh, wow. Yeah. You're pretty close. Yeah, it's been yeah. a long day. How's it going, man? He's right behind me, too. Is he? Oh, good. Oh, well, Johan's right there. You know what? Uh, that's no small feat. No. No small feat. Can't snatch your trail up this way. Don't know. We came from down there. So. We came from the south side, yeah. south this, rim. Oh, you did. You're, uh, not yeah, one day. Not yeah, you one day. We left at two o'clock, eight hours, forty-three minutes later. That's a whole different trail. Really. Yeah. Yeah, that's right, Angel. Yeah, so I couldn't tell you. Yeah. Yeah. Good job, buddy. I'll have some water wall. Good job. Good job. Good job, man. Take a load off. Well, here I am. After the rim to rim. Sun's going down and we're, I'm on the south side. Just getting some uh, video footage. When we uh, did the run this morning, we couldn't see any of this. It was all pitch black. So we were running down the pathway here with our headlamps on. It was pretty surreal. But we missed all of this view. I mean, check this out. So looking back on where we went, we went from here all the way to the other side, 
uh, to the north rim and you look at it from here and it really is quite uh, amazing, quite astounding that you know you can do that in one day. Most people do this in three to four days. They stop at various camping sites along the way and then they have a really good time uh, going from one side to the other side. You know, we decided to do it as a training day for um, Johan and Kevin's Moab 200 and I tagged along for fun and you know what, we had a lot of fun. We had a, a great adventure. Uh, the whole day was really fantastic. And if you do want to have an adventure, I think coming to the Grand Canyon is fantastic. I'm not going to lie to you, there are some hills, no kidding, right? So practice uh, hill climbing and descending, uh, wearing off-road off clothing, like especially shoes, learning how to drink from uh, different water bottles, like I had them on my chest, two on the chest, and a couple on the back. And that really helps you get through this whole uh, off-road adventure, which is really necessary. But uh, that's it. I'm going to uh, say goodbye to the Grand Canyon. It's been uh, a fantastic adventure and I hope to return one day. This is Coach Todd saying thank you very much and happy training. You know what, I'm walking along here and I can see this and it really is like something that we did this in the dark and it's so crazy that there was so much uh, beauty but there's also like cliffs on the side <laughs> that we're going down and it's just remarkable that we, uh, and people do this, right? You put the headlamps on and away you go. Just, just crazy.